Hi everybody, Brandon from c21teaching.com.au here. In today's Flip Teacher Professional Learning video, we are going to take a closer look at Office 365, specifically the Word app. Now, obviously, to get to the Word app, you need to log into your Office 365 account to your home screen. Click on the Word app tile, which will bring you to this screen here. Now, from here, you can see on the left-hand side, you have a range of recent documents. In the middle or in the main body of the screen, you've got quite a large number of optional templates that you can use. Down the bottom, left hand corner we can open from OneDrive specifically so you can come straight into this rather than opening from OneDrive. You can also add a place which allows you to upload from Dropbox. Top right hand corner you have your typical account and profile details. So to get started we're going to open up a brand new document. We're going to start from scratch. We're not going to worry too much about templates at this point in time. Open up a brand new document and this is what you should see. Taking a look at that you will probably notice that there are quite strong similarities between Word Online as they're calling it here and Microsoft Word on your desktop computer. There are a few little tweaks, there are a few things that are a bit different which you would expect in a cloud based system and we're going to take a bit of time looking at those now. Starting in the top left hand corner you can see your app tile this gives you the list the quick easy access to change apps if you need to very very easy the word online icon is right there it doesn't actually do anything you've got your profile there you can see your name here if you click on that it will actually take you back to the home screen for OneDrive on the right hand side you've got again your name which is just your name but next to that is the share button this is the key feature that makes Office 365 so great is that you can share your documents with other people for collaborative purposes. Quite simply in this top box you put a name or an email address. You say whether you want those that person or those people to be able to edit the document or only to view it. It's up to you and it will be contextual and you can put a message in there as well if you need to. Requiring someone to sign in depends on what the document is. If it's a, an open resource that you want to be able to be accessible by anyone you would probably uncheck that box but if it's something that is particularly related to your organization you will probably leave that checked in. When you've done that you click on the share button and it sends off an email to the person it adds it into their OneDrive you can get a link you can actually just get a link for the document and you can share the link specifically to people uh, this could be good if you're sharing to someone um, over a social media messaging platform and you can actually set an expiration date this is a new one for me I've not seen this on many other cloud platforms you can make that link expire within one day, 30 days, 60 days, and so on. So if you're working with somebody and it's only for a limited period of time and you only want that person to have access to that document for a specific period of time, you can set that up within these constraints. There is a custom option there. So you can actually set that up and you can set slightly different permission options within this feature here. And the shared with, this will give you a, an overview of who has access to this document. So that's that component of Word Online and it will be very similar for the other apps within Office 3. The file menu on the left hand side is a little bit different. It's kind of similar, but it's a little bit different. It's got a lot of the same features there that you can see, except it also has the share option. The recent documents list is fairly similar as to what you'd expect on Word on your computer. These main menu bars here are pretty similar to what you would expect to see on your normal computer program. Got a home feature, the insert. The insert one's great. You can either click on insert a picture to upload something or an online picture. An online picture allows you to search for images online it uses Bing there are office add-ins of course you can put links comments headers footers page numbers the most most of the normal stuff you would expect to see page layout features you've got your review features for editing purposes collaborative editing purposes you've got your view features your reading view navigation panes etc this one over here is a search bar it's, it, it's the help the online help for this so in this you can type in what it is that you're trying to do if you're not quite sure how to do something you can type in what it is that you are trying to do so let's say I want to add columns. Add columns. Hit enter. Here we go. Get help on add columns. It will open up a secondary dialog box with the Office 365 help, Word Online help. And there we go. I've got a range of options. Add columns and rows to a table. Can I add newsletter style columns? So you've got to pay attention to the heading. Don't just click the first one, but you can get some help that way. Edit in Word. This allows you to open up that document in Microsoft Word as long as you have Microsoft Word installed on the on, on the computer that you're using. It will give you a standard warning. Beware, potential harm. Ignore that if you want to because 
typically you should be able to. It will then open up Microsoft Word. It will bring up a login box because you'll still need to log in again. You'll need to log into your organization, but it will then eventually open up your document, which it has done so there. You need to enable editing so that it's not in protected view, but you can then edit straight into Microsoft Word. So let's get rid of that because we don't need that now. You do need to be wary of editing something in Microsoft Word on your computer rather than in Word Online. Changes that you make to a document in Word on your computer will not automatically be reflected in the Word Online version. Word Online is where the changes will be live and where they'll be visible immediately to any collaborators. If you open the document in Word on your computer, you'll need to re-upload and reshare that document to whoever it is that needs to have visibility of it. I would recommend typically doing all of your editing in the Word online app rather than in Word on your computer for that exact reason. It's the whole point of cloud computing is that you can do it live online so that everybody can see the changes straight away and you don't have to worry about USBs failing or computers crashing. Close that little box there. The other thing that I forgot to mention when I was going over the left hand menu bar before is that the save as option has some extra features in it other than what you would expect in Word on your computer. You can see here we've got save a copy online, rename the file so by default it's just called document. This is where you come to do that. You can download a copy as a Word file, download a copy as a PDF, or you can download as an ODT. There is no actual save button obviously because it saves live on the fly. It is, you know, it's a cloud system. But if you want to rename the document or if you want to make a copy of it, you come to the menu here and you go select save as. Now you might be wondering, that's all great, but why would I want to use this in my classroom? There are some really great functions within this that makes it fantastic for collaborating. So one example, you could have your students write a short story, you know, a draft of a short story based on a stimulus. You could then require them to share that document with somebody else in the classroom. It could be assigned partners or it could be luck of the draw or you know, a friend. That friend could then come into the document with editing permissions and using the review function they could set up comments to give their feedback on grammar on spelling choice on sentence structure on character development or whatever it is that you're wanting the students to focus on that's one potential option another option that i have seen and i've written about in my my reflection articles from flipcon adelaide is that i saw a teacher using this in his language class so what he had set up was on the word document he had an image with some text out of a short comic strip had some image with the text on the left hand side in the right hand side there was a, an empty space where the students had to enter the translation of the comic text oh, this was a, a French class so the students were in groups there was a dozen or so images each student had to have a go at each image and when it was so when I had completed my image my assigned image and I typed in my translation I exited out of that one I went down to the next one and I had to have a look at the image and read the little strip that was there read the translation that had been entered and I had to either change the translation, correct the translation, or add more information. Now, I actually don't speak any other languages, so I can't give an example of what that might be, but I think from talking to the students, there was, there was some potential where some of the words in French uh, in the context weren't quite clear and they were slightly mistranslated and so they can they would be able to put in hang on that's not what that word means in this particular context it means this so it's a collaborative tool and they can there's a bit of peer teaching going on using Vygotsky's ZPD but that's two examples two very simple examples of how you could use this in a classroom again I would very much recommend that you spend some time playing around with it have a chat with your colleagues have a chat with some others in your professional learning network for other ideas but that's two short examples. That's all the time we've got for in this video. Don't forget to subscribe and for more videos please check out c21teaching.com.au. Thanks very much for watching.